Jarvis, drop my needle. Ring, start! All right, welcome in everybody. G congratulations, you have made it to Friday evening. And you know what that is. That is split screen with yours truly. Thank you so much for being here. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, of course, you can catch us every single Friday night, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Gonna be myself as well as Hermes, which we will get to in one second. But I just wanted to say thank you everybody for joining us. I know 2021 was a crazy year. Um, I know that we are gonna be doing a lot of big things for uh for 2022 we're looking to to up the quality of this show uh with that going to audio so that's going to be coming very very soon so i hope you guys strap in for that uh we've also started a new memory lane segment if you will on the channel uh that we're going to be live streaming every so often and i'm going to be putting together a little bit of a schedule uh i think a monthly schedule kind of letting you guys know when the segments are going to be when the you know what segments are going to be on what days and what times so you can look forward to a little bit more organization going through with that but let me go ahead and get to the introduction we're going to be talking to hermes hermes how in the hell are you sir speech i'm good uh thank you for having me as always for, uh, for episode 32 yeah that is half a stack in minecraft my guy <laughs> There you go. It's half a stack. I love it. Oh, man. How you been? What have you been up to? I've been good. Uh, I've been preparing for a Dungeons and Dragons campaign. I'm going to be playing with Captain Rock Cab and usually Nick Knack. So uh, I've been good. I've been having a lot of fun with that. Sweet, man. Sweet. That's great to hear. I'm glad to hear. It sounds like you've been having a good time with it. So uh, I'm, I'm actually I'm going to ask you a little bit about that throughout the middle of the show, if you don't mind. So if you could touch on your kind of yeah. if you want to reveal it, we'll go ahead and do it. So um all right all right let's hop over here let's get into the show we've got some topics to talk about today um thank you guys so much this is new stuff hope you guys enjoy it uh new scenes it's a little bit nerve-wracking being the full center of attention at the beginning but i will take it we'll go with it we'll get used to it no problem um so hermes i did want to get to uh a couple things here that i put down on our our talking sheet if you will 
a uh, couple yeah. big things we're going to be talking about today nfts why not that seems to be a hot button real emotional topic in the gaming sphere so we're going to go ahead and talk about that today uh halo 3 servers end of an era we will talk about that in my memories and all that kind of stuff that i have to say on that um and then also wait what do you what what are you doing what are you talking about? Oh, you're muting. Okay, I thought I you was were trying to mute my mic like three up. times. I thought you were pointing no, up. <laughs> I missed the mute button like four times. <laughs> That's so great. Uh, we're also going to be touching on Hitman 3. Um, they're coming out with their year, year two content, uh, and they came out with a roadmap for that. So it's going to be very interesting. A lot of cool things come in there. Also, I'm going to touch on the fact on why Hitman 3 deserves so much more damn respect than it reserved this received this year uh, in Game of the Year nominations and things like that. Um, and then also, quick news, Netflix, we're going to be talking about Logan Paul. Yes, Logan Paul, which I never thought would ever be a topic on here, just kind of what it is. Um, and then the Xbox One production shut down. So we're going to be touching on all of those. And then to wrap it up, we'll talk about what's going to be releasing in the next week, week and a half. Um, so... Hermes, let's talk about some NFTs. First, before we go ahead and yeah. jump into this article I have, um, which is by Inverse, uh, they kind of touch on what they are, what they can mean, and all that kind of stuff. Do you know what they are? Do you have any general information? I'm still vaguely um, hit or miss with if I know what they even are. Let me hit you with the best definition that I have seen so far. Okay. Um, so it kind of flared up on Twitter yesterday because um, somebody announced that they are partnering and doing some NFT business. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure is what brought it up to you. <laughs> it is a million percent the reason I brought it up today. Um, but I then saw somebody share that it's like when... Do you remember all those businesses back in the day that used to sell stars? And they're like, you can name a star after somebody. Yes. Do you remember those? Okay, yes. so like all of those businesses are defunct now. Okay, yeah. And like nobody knows like who owns what star yeah you know, yeah yeah you have no owner. idea right no way of tracking it right because hundreds of businesses were doing the same thing yeah it it is nfts are essentially that okay okay i think is it that's probably the most the generic way to use them correct like because there are other ways to implement them because i'm the reason i wanted to talk about them is uh, and we'll just get right into it. My my assumption, and granted, I have I'm completely ignorant when it comes to this topic. Uh, I I see the hate, um, and I'm only focusing necessarily on the video game aspect of it because right. that's what's most important and gonna you know reflect my day to day stuff. Um, right. So that being said, I have heard that, for example, you know how. Um, microtransactions were a chance to get a skin that you wanted right but right. Right. everybody had the opportunity to get said skins given that they were just paying money or dumping money you know depending regardless of how many yes you increase your chances with how many boxes you op opened right but if you opened one if you opened one million the rewards were the same right so right. my my understanding for video game implementation implementation of skins right going from either weapon skins or character skins whatever it might be is these companies can offer up a skin for sale that you could then buy the digital rights to and have the digital receipt for said skin um kind of yeah which would never which technically you would own and it may or may not be able uh you would own it and sell it basically to anybody if you, uh, but only you could use it. Right. Okay. So that is my understanding of as far as what the, the video game part of it is, um, is that could be implemented. You know, it could be a, an actual NPC. It could be, Hey, we have a NFT for a character in our game, whatever it is. Um, right. I thought about that and I was like, kind of cool. And then it got me thinking back to, microtransactions and i was like isn't this just a targeted microtransaction that you are solely available to that you are solely responsible in ownership of so essentially the the weird part about games using nfts is it 
I think that people are thinking like people uh we're just going like pro NFT people, right? I think that people are thinking that they're like cool, I own this thing now that is different from everybody else. Right. But really you aren't seeing the difference. The difference is literally in the code of said skin or said character and it like it's just a I mean it's a non-fungible token is yeah. what NFT stands for. Mm-hmm. Um, it is literally just a line of code that is different for you and not anybody else. And that's what NFTs are. Like, they're all the same, at, like, uh, as far as, like, what mint it is, like, what the picture looks like, essentially. Okay. But the code is different. And it depends on how many of that item are minted, which is how rare the NFT is. And, like, how depending on how much it sells and how much it's right. worth. And yeah, NFTs yeah. that are worth millions of dollars. Like, maybe you have the first mint of that specific NFT. Got you. Then okay. it's worth a ton of money. Gotcha. Okay. So, it, it, in, in a more it is physical theme is right it is. of course of yeah. course and that that's a big push this year for everybody i mean that's just is what it is right um right so that's where i thought hey that'd be kind of cool to have one skin that nobody else could have but then i was thinking like well how much am i gonna have to pay for something like that right and, and me paying for one skin and then granted this and it was the same thing with loot boxes if you put skins exclusive skins in a loot box and you couldn't buy loot boxes because you don't make enough. You don't have that, you know, expendable funds to use for, you know, fake skins or, you know, digital content. Right. It's the same thing if you did that. So um, I just don't know. How, how do they think we went from getting rid of microtransactions altogether, right? All together. Absolutely. Just we're like, you know what? The, the gaming space is not ready for them. Uh, if you play FIFA, if you play Madden, if you play NBA 2K, you are ready for them because you've been doing them and you're the biggest, you know, you've been buying those for a long time. And that's that's fine. If that's what makes you happy, though, you know what I mean? Like, that's OK. I'm not I'm not saying don't go out and make you happy because it comes back to the option. You don't have to if you do wanna it. Be, if you want to be a fucking sellout, be a fucking sellout. Yeah, fucking, you want the best team, but then you're like, <laughs> do I eat this month? Do I buy a Cristiano Ronaldo card in FIFA 22? You know if you mean? want to be Breezy Akuma, be yeah. Breezy Akuma. <laughs> yeah. I know that boy loves his FIFA. I actually don't even know if he buys a lot of them. But um, I do know that uh, that's where my confusion and there's no way that we're ready for something like that. The gaming right. universe and the gaming atmosphere is not ready for that. Um, well, not only that, but like the these people partnering companies i mean that that's all i've seen personally so far in my personal sphere but like they're all announcing this on twitter and like on twitter the the vocal majority is people who fucking hate nfts why are you going to twitter with that yeah yeah and that's that's i've seen that yeah that's kind of what brings it up i spend most of my day that's my social media of choice is twitter um right. you know what i mean I, I keep it all strictly video games i don't even i don't even filter it with anything else i just it's strictly video game news and everything else um here's my thing also to to kind of add to it is back to my whole it being an option doesn't mean it's an option for me but doesn't mean i want it to be gone kind of a thing um i know that these nfts uh when you sell them the company that originated the content gets a cut of said sale. Correct. Which is why big companies are doing it, right? It's not like, hey, yeah. you bought it, it's all yours. Oh, if you resell it, we actually get original uh, a percentage back. What? And it's not like you're reselling these skins that you're getting in game, right? Well, I, I don't know. It could be, right? It definitely could be. Because like the one future, of the yeah. one of the examples I, I read about was Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Uh one of the guys who plays the game a ton has a weapon skin for his M4 that is strictly his. He won it for free, free of charge, no problem. He has it. He play he said, Yeah, I don't play a ton online. I just kind of play um i just play you know the story and i love that that world why not have something that nobody else has in my game right um 
but he decided to sell it. Sold it for like 20 bucks, maybe 37 bucks, something like that. Or sold for 37. He got 20 because a cut went to uh, Ubisoft. So he no longer has said skin because it's been taken out. Interesting. Right? That's the first time I've heard of NFTs traded in the video game space. Right. That was, and I don't know, you have to do it. Well, you have to go through the whole blockchain and a certain website and do all this kind of shit. So, like, there's confusing right, stuff. It was minted. Yeah. After that, I have no idea where at. Like, after your, your like your initial start, you're like, I'm interested in selling. I don't know anything past that. I just know the blockchain is a thing, and that's what you go for. But right. I can say that I was like, that's kind of neat. But I also know that it's going to get extremely convoluted and just cluttered with shit right so right but that's also me as a person is just because it's an option i don't want doesn't mean i want it to be gone i just won't exercise said option you know what i mean i also like <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna hot take this and split screen's gonna get some shit good. but <laughs> good um i that's your role I that's your role on this show I don't see um, for the for the most part, there is a problem with NFTs and like uh, the effects that they might have on the environment. But not all NFTs are like that. And I think people on Twitter just heard it. And now it's forever bad in their mind. And it's not going to fucking change. Right. I and, I and this is the well, you know, this is always how it goes with new technology, though, right? change right. is change is always disruptive at the beginning but the early adopters are the ones um what is that saying holy shit uh fortune favors the brave right yeah that is so true in cryptocurrency it is so true in the stock market it is so true in probably nfts to be honest there's money to be made in the nft metaverse yeah right so um that's I, been proven. I would be lying i would be lying if i said i didn't look into how to do it as a creator well of course and that's smart that's not a bad I didn't thing pull the plug on it but i definitely looked like what all goes into it right and that's not a bad thing that's smart if anything that's just the smartest right. way to own any kind of content creation uh any kind of you know uh creative artist if you're an art if you have any kind of art any type of anything that's smart to look into Especially what the future like could go to Right. Especially like I. I mean, I, I, I'm going to call out who it was, but I trust Troy Baker's managers to know what he was getting like into. Right. And well, that. Yeah, you know, I agree. And that's who we're if you guys don't know, Troy Baker announced um, this isn't who the what the article is, but I'm going to touch on it real quick. Uh, Troy Baker announced that he was partnering with a company. Um, which I think he is trying to turn his his voice question mark into an NFT. And I'll look that up because I don't want to be wrong. Um, uh, that, that is a thing. That is OK. A thing. Uh, Troy Baker NFT. I'm sure I'll get lots of stuff. Um, yeah, sound, sound bites can be NFTs as well. Okay. Sound bites, images, videos. All right. You know what? I'm going to pull it up. Let's just do it right now. Here we go. So um, here we go. This is done, and this is an article by IGN. Um, it is Troy Baker is working with NFTs, but fans are unimpressed. Uh, update, of course, to that, because he did come out and have a statement. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see here. Update. Troy Baker has apologized for his earlier tweet, saying that the hate... Okay, let's actually go. Let's reference this stuff first. Um, oh, boy. See, like, that doesn't make any sense. If that's an NFT, why'd you post it? Because it's no longer yours. Anyway, see, that's where well, I, that's... The, see, the the weird part is it is. Like, just because people save the images doesn't mean that they have the NFT part of the coding behind that image. I get it. I get that part of it. But, like, what's the difference? <laughs> well, you know it's I mean? not... So, just because they have an image, they can't add it into their crypto wallet. Because all of that, like... When you buy crypto and when you buy NFTs, it mm -hmm. goes into the same wallet, gotcha. essentially. Okay, okay, okay. I understand yeah, that. So just because they copy and paste the image, it doesn't make it an NFT. That's the I, meme that it I does, but it doesn't. I understand that. Um, wait, why doesn't? That's better. Well, that's better. 
There it is. I knew it was on. I knew the crop wasn't on there. God damn it. <laughs> Anyways, it's there now. Um, Troy Baker, his original tweet says, I'm partnering with Voiceverse NFT to explore ways uh, where together we might bring new tools to new creators to make new things and allow everyone a chance to own and invest in the IPs they create. We all have a story to tell. You can hate or you can create. What'll, what'll it, what will it be? Pretty much is what he says. Um, you can hate or you can create, I think is the, one of the more in controversial things that he said. And that's what he came back and actually yeah. apologized for. Yeah. I mean that, that is like, like see the, the hard part about that tweet, right? Like definitely could have been worded better because oh, yeah. like you knew you were going to get hate. And it's so like and it's, you're in the video game space, you, and you know, know you're gonna get hate. Just like you're a big fan of Matt Mercer, I'm also a big fan of Troy Baker. Um Oh, I I'm fans of people who work with Troy Baker. Like right. I like I I'm a fan by uh connection. Basically. Right. And I think Troy Baker is one of the most talented voice actors in the industry. Um and I still feel that way. This doesn't take away from his talent or the work that he's done, not by far. Um, because like I said, this is this is a direction he chose to go. I just don't want it to affect people who it doesn't want to affect. You know what I mean? And that that's 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 the answer every single time. Like there's something I'm not for, right? But right. um I I don't I just don't get it. But I'll I'll touch on a little bit more here. And of course, this article is IGN and it is written by Matt uh Perslow. So um we'll go back up and read the update after, uh, because that's gonna be what we're gonna do here. Original story says voice actor Troy Baker has announced he is partnering with an NFT company and his fans are less than impressed. Baker, who is most famous for his role as Joel in The Last of Us, revealed on Twitter that he is partnering with Voiceverse, a company that helps create and promote AI powered voice NFTs. These text to speech voices are designed with intention of being used to create audiobooks, podcasts, read scripts. Uh, or read scripts and other projects that require voiceover without the need for an actual voice actor. Here's That's cool as fuck. <laughs> That's here, awesome. He, here's the thing. Is that not attacking exactly what he does for work? And I quote, and other projects projects that require voiceover without a need without the need for an actual voice actor. What? Yeah, true. Like, what's stopping somebody from putting this on a like an indie title, right? Like, and I'm not attacking indie developers here, but like, right. like, what if somebody was just like oh by the way troy baker's in this game he's not actually in this game right you know well that's what i'm saying is like he no, you no longer need but that's interesting that that's that's weird to me uh i'm partnering with voice we already read the tweet um at the time of the writing the tweet was invited vastly with more replies and quote tweets than likes revealing the controversial nature of the topic uh i'm not going to read other people's stuff because it's just what the hell ever um so that kind of yeah you you kind of i had you probably had a Ooh, feeling what that did, was, wait what did the company shoot back with on that one all these highlighted ones the highlighted. sure 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 yeah uh bison guy kelly sex horn twitch.tv brain mage so shout out to them i guess um this is an outrageously bad idea on top of the nft bum f which is bum fuck uh it's here is an ai tool that can render voice actors useless you're not only pulling up the ladder for voice artists just finding their feet you're also devaluing your own work staggeringly blisteringly terrible uh voice verse comes in and says one of eight even though the two are only being shown oh, here wow. uh voice nfts provide unlimited perpetual access to the underlying ai voice that nft represents ownership of if you own a voice nft you can create all kinds of voice content and you will own all of the ip Imagine being able to create customized audiobooks, YouTube videos, e-learning lectures, or even podcasts with your favorite voice, all without the haste of additional legal work. This has this also allows people uh, with limited resources to access professional grade voices more easily. So it's like booking them without actually booking them kind of a thing. 
you know, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't, I still don't understand the f- the f- fact that this exists. And this is a whole different conversation, mm-hmm. but the fact that this exists could mean a lot in the future of streaming in general. Like a ima- Okay, so so my side thought here is like imagine NFTs applied to music that you could then buy the NFT and you could play it on your stream. True. Yeah, yeah, okay. I see what you're saying. I see. So you're thinking DMCA shit, like music stuff. Yeah, because, like, you can use their voice and, like, their voice isn't copyrighted. Mm -hmm. You know, like like they pointed out, you have the legal, like, you have the non-fungible token. You own it. With just reading stuff like this, it's super cool because of tech and the way that the shit is going. But real right. quick, I'm going to do my get off my line, get off my lawn kind of stuff right now is I don't like it. I yeah. think it, it 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 doesn't. So the less AI, especially. OK, so you're telling me you're going to get just as good of a performance from Joel in The Last of Us if that was AI done and not actual I fucking, you know what I'm saying? But also, yeah, I that stuff is done. I don't know. If, I don't know if the voiceover is done the same time that the uh the actual acting is done i'm assuming the motion capture is done at the same time they're recording their voices because of just you know for the the raw emotion that comes from doing a scene in your mocap with the voices running right i do not think it's as powerful as a of a performance right there's no way like how you know i don't understand this because well and that's probably how they're getting away with like like they can sell this AI voice NFT and it will never be as big like the game produced, let's say. Like let's say somebody used Troy Baker's voice in a game. Right. The game will never be as big because it's limited by the fact that there's no emotion behind the voice. Right. Or you maybe know? there is, and I'm I'm just completely ignorant to the what the technology is, right? Uh, right? I just I don't understand. And that's my that's probably I think a lot of people that's it's strictly reactionary to this is new. Don't really care for it. It's not the way it's always been. But on the other side of me is like, we'll see what happens. I don't have to use it. You know what I mean? I'm not making a video game. I don't need an. I'm not going to go out and buy an NFT. Uh, I'm not going right. to go. You know what I mean? Regardless of what it is. Um, but I wanted to touch on it. I know this is a big conversation. It's a hot button issue. Um, but I, I did have this website, which is called Inverse. And this article is written by Christopher Grow, 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 something like that. Um, it's what are NFTs in games? And I'm just going to read this real quick. Uh, it's not terribly long. Regardless of whether it's used in gaming or elsewhere, the acronym NFT refers to non-fungible token for a digital item. It sounds a bit complicated in name, but the idea is actually fairly simple. An NFT is a certificate of ownership of a digital good that's supposed to be made in a limited quantity. They can be attached to digital pictures or memes, video clips, or even something as abstract as original source code for the for the World Wide Web. If something is fungible, then it is mutually interchangeable commodity like a dollar bill. No matter what form it takes when you have an NFT for a specific digital item, you can own the certificate certified token for it on digital ledger or blockchain. Simply put, you get the specified link for the proofs that proves your connection to the digital asset. Just like someone can own a highly valuable car in the real world, NFTs can offer the opportunity to claim a small slice of the digital landscape. It's like owning the deed to something that exists purely on the internet. Still feels weird. Anyways, I, I, that, that's a great definition, but it seems like it's super. It seems like they're trying. This seems instead of explaining it to me, like they're selling it to me. That that right. that paragraph I just read sounds like, hmm, uh, this we're extremely for it. You know what I mean? That's what that sounds like to me. Uh, how NFTs might work in video games. Uh, do, 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 do. OK, right here. Exactly. Especially when it comes to gaming, large corporations see NFTs as an avenue to make continuous revenue stream out of digital content. For example, if a rare Fortnite skin were offered as an NFT, a player could be the first to unlock skin in game, then take ownership of it. Once they do, the token for that skin can then be resold to the highest bidder, potentially for a lot of money. Regardless of how much money the skin sells for, its original makers at Epic Games would still take a cut of that payout. 
and it can be resold by the new owner, additional owners in perpetual or proprietary. Ugh, I can't even talk today with Epic hypothetically taking a cut every single time. So not even the first time it sells every single time after. Holy right. shit. I completely understand why they want to do that now. Doesn't mean I have to like it, but I see why companies are like, we need to get in on this, especially like Square and Enix why, and shit like that. Right. And that's why, like, uh, like Troy Baker said, for small artists, if that becomes a big deal, then it works very well in their favor. Like if they like if a small artist makes an NFT and that sells over and over and over again. Yes, I agree. You're always making money off. Right. And I understand. And I agree with that. That's cool. See, when I look at it from the small creator part, I'm like, that's exciting. But when I look at the look at it from the corporation side of it, I, th I, I feel dirty. Right. It's so right. weird. They're like, cool, small creators. Oh, let's do this. Large corporations. I don't think you need to be abusing it because they will. That's my right. that's my that's what I'm just terrified of. But I want to stop talking about fucking NFTs for right now fucking driving me nuts but it's a hot button thing and it's something to learn about and it's something to you know wrap your head around and that's kind of exciting as well um but next let's talk about let's do a little bit of um end of an era talk if you will yeah so um halo 3 as of yesterday january 13th 2022 you can no longer matchmake for games on the Xbox 360 servers. Um, of course, you can still play the Halo Master Chief Collection, which has its own dedicated servers for those games. But right. you can no longer log on to your Xbox 360 or play or it's not even the 360. You just put in the 360 disc uh, or have it downloaded, whatever it is. But you can no longer play the original uh, Halo 3. I think it's Halo 4. Halo ODST and Halo Reach. All those have been taken offline officially wow. as of yesterday. Um, I was caught off guard. I'm going to be honest. Uh, I think if I was aware of it in the, the day and the time, I would have probably hopped on just to do it because I know there were so many people uh, that went on and did it. But I actually hopped on after the fact. And if you are familiar with Halo 3, you know that in the matchmaking part of it, you know that there is a population oh world map. Oh my god, yeah. And um, the population world map was completely dark, uh, which has not been the case since 2007, uh, which is fucking insane. Uh, so it was a little bit of... I don't want to say it was kind of emotional, kind of a... Kind of a uh, uh, just I don't know how to explain it, but it was it brought back a ton of memories for me because Halo 3, Halo 2 is where it actually started for me online and playing with, you know, just friends on Xbox Live and doing all that kind of stuff. But right. I think I, I put more Halo 2, I think, is still my most played game. If you actually like go through all the time, like I remember the uh, what was a year in review or no 20th anniversary thing that Xbox did. My most right. played game across all of them is Halo 2, which is insane because wow. Halo 2 yeah. came out fucking forever ago. Um, but it was kind of one of those things that was like, didn't think it was going to be a big deal for me because I can still play Halo 3 on Master Chief Collection. Right. But God damn it, man. It actually hit me a little bit like. This shit isn't forever. You know what I mean? It, it, there's right. not always going to be a collection like Master Chief Collection to save these older games that you can keep playing and playing. Like, sooner or later, these games are just going to not be able to be played online. You know what I mean? So you can still do custom games online, but, like, you can't matchmake for stuff, and that's crazy to me. But I don't know how much of Halo 3 you played. I did, and I played a lot. That was my first introduction to it, really. Oh, so damn good absolutely so damn good uh it was i think halo 3 was probably the peak um for as good as halo 2 was you know uh just overall halo 3 was more like the peak of popularity it just absolutely was for the whole halo universe and franchise uh, i don't think it got it's much also, better than that it's also kind of weird to me that like they did that like was there a reason they did that was there something wrong with the servers at all uh no i don't think that, that there was anything wrong um i think it was just it's just a matter of like 
it's it everything comes to an end i think you know what i mean so right. <clears throat> for me i think it was just well it was just uh you have to do it sooner or later because it ends up costing more than it actually produces right uh, yeah, it's just weird. It's just weird that they would remove it before Forge comes out for Halo Infinite, because like the Halo Three Forge was one of the best. Well, yeah, that's true. But you can still. That's the thing, though. Maybe it was like, hey, not only a lot of people are playing on the 360 servers, everybody's kind of right. moved over to Xbox One, Series One or Series X or S or the. You know what I mean? And they're playing right. it on the Master Chief Collection um it's just a fact that like the original servers are gone right you can still do everything on halo 3 and hopping on the xbox one or whatever but um it's crazy it's actually really it's kind of mind-blowing to me but i just wanted to touch on that a uh, quick little article here that we can hop on and let's take a look at uh one of my favorite places by the way uh windows central uh and this one was written by who is this written brendan lowry it says Halo Xbox 360 servers have been shut down, ending an era. Thankfully, custom games are still available. Um, this says Microsoft and the three, three, four industries have shut down the matchmaking multiplayer servers for the mainline Xbox 360 era Halo games, including Halo 3, Halo Reach, Halo 4, as well as Firefight matchmaking for Halo 3 ODST. Additionally, a number of other services have been sunset as well, including FileShare and all of the aforementioned or aforementioned games, as well as service records, player customization, and challenges in Halo Reach and Halo 4. Uh, in the days or hours leading up to the closure of the servers, many Halo fans flocked back to these titles and entered matchmaking for one last time. Some helped fellow fans get their final missing achievements, which is fucking awesome. I saw so many videos of people on TikTok joining yeah. a lobby, and it was, you know, you got the red team versus the blue team. That's just the way it works. That's always how it's been in Halo. Um, but they weren't even shooting each other. Like they all met in a specific area and we're just like shooting in the sky and like not, you know what I mean? It wasn't even actual games that they were playing. They were just kind of cool. just chilling. Um, Halo three also, uh, one of the more fond memories of when you start a game, you could talk shit to the other team before the game even started. Yes. They open comms, yes. open comms before you even logged in fucking fantastic. And I love it. Uh, but so I think this is just a cool, cool story. End of an era. Halo is very popular. Um, Halo three was the peak. And I think it's just it's one of those things, especially for people my age. And I guess I'm a dinosaur. Um, it's just realizing that, like, my games are slowly becoming retro games, <laughs> which is fucking crazy to think about. But uh, also kind of kind of neat, because the way it goes is you get older, you play more video games. That's just the way it works. Um. Oh, yeah, so I just wanted to touch on Halo because that's kind of a big deal. Oh, shit, hold on. I am on the uh, wrong thing. The scenes. That's behind spoilers! The scenes. No! That's me just cursing at Hermes. Um, <laughs> but any thoughts? Any kind of like, do you have any big memories of Halo? Like, did you do any LAN parties or anything? Oh, yeah, all the time. Uh, I remember with like a group of friends, we would always uh, get together, and this friend owned a projector, like, like back in the day, we're like that was bougie, <laughs> you know. Dude, projectors were so good, man. Yeah. Uh, if you had one, it was like, oh shit. Yeah. So yeah, we would all play on the projector screen, just forge, and I remember there was this one map that just like in the sky went around in a circle, and like one person would be the sniper. Yep. And like you had to use a warthog to get all the way across the circle. <laughs> yes. Um, dude, so dude, forge and the custom matches were so damn good back then, man. So yes. goddamn good. Uh, you had zombies or infected was a lot of fun as well. Um, there were some games that were a little bit questionable of what the titles of those were actually called, but I'm not going to say them now. Um, <laughs> just because, uh, but they were a lot of fun. You could call them really anything, but um, just good times. Good, good times. Um, all right, all right, all right. So next topic is going to I'm just going to these next ones are just going to be quick because I know we've actually spent a lot of time on NFTs, which is fine. Um, but Hitman three year two content revealed. So here, OK, first off, I'm going to start it off by saying, holy <laughs> shit, Hitman three was absolutely neglected when it comes to any kind of yeah. awards any kind of recognition for the fucking game that it is because it, it is the best stealth game probably ever created 
probably ever made. It is probably one of okay. the best stealth games, and you don't even have to play it as a stealth game. That's what's fucking mind blowing. You could literally go guns a blazing, set everything up for your target to be destroyed if you just wanted to walk up, shoot him with a machine gun, and have to deal with the repercussions of that. So be it. But it is so fucking good, and I'm sad to see that it didn't get the recognition that I think it deserves. Um, but year two is going to be huge. So let me go ahead and hop over here to this article because I want to share some things with you, Hermes. Yeah. Did you wait? Have you played Hitman 3 this year? I know I played it. I don't know if you were yeah. in some of those streams or not. Um, uh, I'll be real. So when Hitman like initially hit like my sphere of games, it was just very confusing on how to play it because it's a little robotic too. Chapters. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. So you're talking the original Halo or uh, Hitman. Okay okay yeah like i've never i have never understood the appeal to chapter releasing games mm -hmm. i didn't Understand. like it with the telltale series i didn't like it with the original hitman right because like i never know what to buy right like it just i understand using as a consumer mm -hmm. yeah and then you just then you can save money if you like wait at the end of the year when everything's out right. and then you're like well then why didn't i just do this which they got away from which was great for halo uh halo god damn it, it's on the brain um for hitman <laughs> 3 but I do want to go ahead and touch on this because um, first, before I announce that, actually, or before we talk about that, I want to let you know, Hermes, since you haven't played those, Hitman Trilogy coming to Game Pass January 20th. Hey, sweet. So if you ever want to get started on the 20th, you can go ahead uh, and, and and check it out and get some get some Hitman shit going in because that's a lot of content. If you, <laughs> That's a lot of stuff. If you want to play Hitman 1, 2, and 3 of the new trilogy, uh, that just came out. I'm actually, I'm looking for uh, new games to stream. So honestly, that sounds good. If anything, <laughs> if you're not looking to do a full playthrough, man, if you're looking to just have fun for a stream, hey man, is cool. Launch it, see what happens. Let the chaos fucking ensue because you can kill people in millions of ways. I also, so. I also love in like any form of media, social stealth. It is my favorite version of stealth. Okay. Like blending in blending with your in. surroundings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and that's oh, a, this is so a huge good. part of it too. Uh, camouflage, yeah. you know, changing your outfits. That's a huge part of this game. Always has been. Um, but uh, here we go. This is what I want to do here. Let's go ahead and hit on it. So a couple of things that Hitman Year 2 is bringing uh, is going to be the el elusive target arcade. Elusive Arc Target Arcade is a brand new game mode that takes elusive target concept to the next level, mixes up the formula and introduces new challenges and unlockable rewards whilst keeping its essence, which makes elusive targets exciting and interesting to play. If you don't know what that is, I think that's like a that's like a some kind of update. Uh, I think it might be a okay. daily. They did. I think they did um, a spawn on me target they did a kind of funny target like where you could actually go and like track these people down but they actually named them after these people and of course it's just like a partnership which is super dope super super cool um so to do so this one actually so each arcade contract now tasks you with taking down consecutive uh, elusive targets one contracted after the other once completed to proceed to the next uh and there are additional complications added it does a contract as well uh do, 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 do. so if you fail any arcade contract at any point there will be a 12 hour lockout before you can retry the contract again from the start this lockout enables us to keep the high stakes gameplay that is a hallmark for elusive targets whilst giving you the players do a clear indication of when they are able to play a particular elusive target again so that's kind of the first thing which is cool you know you get these certain people that you can track down just add to your stuff Blah, blah, blah. So there's more exciting stuff. Hitman VR on PC releasing January 20th. Um, this would be an amazing game with VR. I, Holy shit. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. One million percent yes. I give that to you. Hermes, it is going to be so goddamn good, man. Holy crap. That'd be so awesome. absolutely so much fun to play in VR. Um, Hitman VR comes to PC. And once again, we're supporting the entire world of assassination trilogy if you can access hitman one and two within hitman three you can play it all in vr insane one two and three That's trilogy cool. available in vr pretty nuts um i don't maybe i can watch this real quick this is vr look at this guy <laughs> this is probably not good for the dmca bunkers <laughs> <laughs> 
can just like grab him and shoot him. <laughs> I, uh... Oh shit! Oh dude. my god! <laughs> yes! Yes! That's oh. everything I wanted. <laughs> so He's just good. Dancing the <laughs> <goal. laughs> This is gonna be fucking great. Oh. Oh my god. That's so goddamn good. Anyways, that is fucking fantastic. If you guys get a uh, chance, I'm going to be doing my best to check out some Hitman VR streams because I think that's going to be really, really cool. Uh, I'm, I'm going to buy a fucking Oculus. Just, just for that's Hitman, awesome. dude. That'd be so dope. Um, I will be right back. No problem. Yeah, no problem. Let me switch over here. Actually, we're good. Uh, another one that, of course, you've got some technology improvements coming later in 2020. Uh, 2022, I'm sorry. Uh, do, 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 do. Enhancement to the game, the option. A ray tracing for PC, uh, better reflections, better shadows. Locations are going to look better than ever. Uh, and so I, I was just mentioning technology improvements, so that's going to be cool, of course. Uh, they're going to be adding ray tracing to PC, so that's neat. Gonna game's going to look fucking fantastic, more than it already does. Uh, Hitman Trilogy now coming to Game Pass. It's also going to be sold as a package. Uh, which you'll be able to buy on all the storefronts. Um, but coming to Game Pass is fucking pretty big, right? That's pretty. Yeah. That's pretty great. Is this drunk one punch man? <laughs> <laughs> Show me on the trays where they ray touched. You. <laughs> uh, but this one is exciting. This is the one I wanted to get to, Hermes. It's called Hitman Freelancer, and it's going to be releasing in the spring. Freelancer is a brand new single player mode coming to Hitman 3 that introduces rogue like elements, strategic planning, and customizable safe house. Okay. So, my understanding that's one of those things where, like, you try to complete it, and if you don't complete it, you obviously start back over at the beginning and try to make your progress again, right? Maybe requiring uh, acquiring upgrades or weapons or whatever it might be. New gadgets. Yeah. That's fucking exciting to me that sounds cool as shit in a hitman universe so that's the biggest one for me um let's start by exploring one of the new maps coming to hitman 3 uh safe house which is a playable space this playable space is an entirely different type of location and we've never built anything like it before it's customizable it allows you to choose exactly what type of hitman you are or want agent 47 to be as you progress through Freelancer, more areas of the safe house can be unlocked and new customization options will be available. You can configure and customize the safe house to your exact specifications and spend most of the time, uh, spend all the time, as much time as you want there, whether you want to pick out a new shirt, browse to test your weapons at the firing range or make changes to your decor. It's all possible. The safe house is also important space because all your pre-mission planning takes place there. Holy crap. That's mm -mm -mm. Cool, man. kind of a new mission hub, if you will, but it seems like it's interactive as hell, which is kind of dope. Yeah. Uh, and that's where all your collections and stuff will go as well. So uh, I think that's going to be really, really cool. Hitman's kind of a big deal. Um, it was at least I fell in love with Hitman 3 when I played it. Unfortunately, it came out at the beginning of the year. So, um, but we'll see. That's running wild with this one. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Nick Knack, so what do you do for mm, freelance stuff? <laughs> His tax are going to be terrible. Uh, he may be good with a gun, but I've never seen someone so blatantly shoot themselves in the foot. <laughs> Oof, the way you said decor did not come out the way you sh it should have. That's that's probably that's probably true. Uh, but we, won't, we don't have to talk about it. Uh, and then they have some new maps coming later in the year as well. But exciting stuff. Um, if you're a fan of Hitman, I am. I think Hermes is. Changes to your what? <laughs> um. But oh no! Again, I did it again. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let's do this. Let's do this. All right. So, uh, Hermes, I've got more quick news. Uh, if you want to go over it, one of them is going to affect you directly. So okay. Uh, I'm going to bring it up. We're going to talk about it right now. I'm I'm sorry I have to break the news to you, but Netflix raising their prices again. Oh, I got out at the right time. <laughs> <laughs> Netflix raising their prices again. Uh, price hike and new season Wait, rates. Wait, hold up. Can, oh. we, can we, like, I wish we had a rewind feature, but can we rewind, like, four episodes to when I said, Netflix always fucking raises their prices. <laughs> <laughs> They've got to. They absolutely have to. It's like I called to. that. <laughs> right. They absolutely have to. Um, 
so uh if i let me see here so the basic is going to be ten dollars a month standard 1550 a month and premium is going to be twenty dollars a month Jesus. um let me see here it does i thought it brought up the old prices let me see if i can find the old prices here uh here we go this article is from GameSpot, written by eddie mccutch <laughs> mccutch mccutch i'm gonna say mccutch let's say mccutch because mccutch doesn't sound like i want to say it um so netflix is going from okay standard plan is going from 14 dollars to a, go ahead you want to show the article all right let's do it sure uh boom there we go uh netflix is now more expensive as streaming giant has raised its monthly subscription prices in the u.s effective today the standard plan is now 1550 a month up from 14 while the 4k offering is going up to 20 dollars a month from 18 the basic is going up from 10 uh going up to 10 from nine dollars um so that starts immediately i guess uh it's 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 kind of a thing where we've seen it you were wrong you weren't wrong when you said it a long time ago um right which is which is kind of whatever i don't know i still feel like the it dark even mode? goes on to say <laughs> price hikes are normal for netflix <laughs> normal it's in it's in the mission <laughs> statement right um but i think i think that's really it's it is what it is so I, i'm i'm at the point where i'm i'm not there yet it's still giving me the content that i enough i think right i don't know it's hard to explain um i think I, I'm, I'm not there yet to get rid of it at least i would say like i don't think i've gotten rid of it for good by any means right. uh things are going to release that i'm going to want to check out and i'll drop other subscription services to pick up that one that's fair but i really yeah i really think like at this rate at least with i mean people my age um we're just we're just kind of like swapping back and forth to whatever has the content that we want to watch. Yeah, it, whenever it is, because if they release it all like The Witcher, right? If they re release The Witcher all at one time, one time, then you pay for it for that month, and then you're like, okay, well, until the next thing I want, you know what I mean, or whatever right. it might be. So it's not a bad strategy. It's just unfortunately that you know that's the way it has to be with. Right. Um, uh, I was just talking to someone today. I unfortunately uh, didn't get the chance to finish Arcane. Ah. and that's one that i wish i would have been able to finish i really liked it mm -hmm. but like just financially it didn't make sense right right, right. it makes sense i got you uh maybe maybe it'll actually come back and you'll be able to do that you'll, or you'll at least get it back you know what i mean yeah um I'm sure. let's see here so next one we have is uh do you know any do you know logan paul ever heard of him <laughs> i've heard of him you have heard of him okay so yeah. logan paul Spent 3.5 million apparently on fake Pokemon cards. Um, oh. which is too bad, but also, uh, I don't care. I, I don't know. I wanted to touch on it just because, because I think it's Pokemon. Um, and apparently, these this case was filled with G.I. Joe junk, these cases that were actually wrapped, sealed and everything it duped everybody all the experts they had on everything that all the collectors of cards and things like that um absolutely duped them so that's kind of uh that's sad i mean 3.5 million dollars is not cheap but um kind of insane but um, uh, and i i i mean i don't hate to be this guy is it fake it's it's the pulse it's clickbait you know what I'm saying? I understand. Like, Did they swap it out for fake ones and either, actually do that? Like the Pauls are very good yes. at yeah, at yeah. knowing how to be the center of attention. Because any news is good news. It doesn't matter. <laughs> exactly. Which is which is definitely the take here is like uh, what what stops him from opening these, taking them, filling them back up with other bullshit, and then making that money back instantly by views and you know, just everything, right? Which is exactly yeah. what chat's saying. If you can read it down there, which is exactly what they're all saying. So uh, it's smart. It's absolutely smart because I could care less if these are fake or not fake. I don't watch any of his right. videos. I don't watch his fight. I don't really absorb any of their content. So um, just, it's just funny. He came out, I was like, everybody be careful. Be careful, guys. You could definitely have some issues uh yeah. with with the whole industry and it's like that's that's where it gets scary is like don't do that if yours is the fake just just do what you need to do 
Yeah, the Pauls are the perfect representation of any news is good news. As long as your name is in people's mouths, people are talking about you. You're making money. Yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Who buys G.I. Joe cards? Come on. <laughs> exactly, Nick. <Nick-Nack>. Well put. <laughs> <laughs> um and last but not least uh in the quick stuff here um is xbox one console production is discontinued back in 2020 uh so that in the end of 2020 they go they went ahead and discontinued the production of the xbox one console generation to focus on of course on the xbox series s and x which is interesting because this was posted by darren uh bontheus i th- Bonth- Louise. Sorry, I'm going to butcher that name. I do apologize from GameSpot. Um, but PlayStation just announced that they're re- they're ramping up production of the PS4 to counteract the shortages of PS5s. Doesn't make sense, I guess. No, <laughs> not really. Right. So it just doesn't make any sense. Um, just weird timing, I guess, but also, uh, PlayStations can't be made worth a shit right now. Um, and they, they, when they are made and ail- available for purchase, they fly right off the, uh, right off the, um, right off the shelves. Speaking of PS5s, uh, usually knickknack recently, the proud owner of one, uh, due hey, to my, due nice. to, due to my tip. And I feel like I am. The PS5 Godfather. So you kind of are. <laughs> I, it's it's just my thing. It's what I do. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Tutelage. That's right. Uh, follow this man. Follow love this him. Man. <laughs> uh, so I'm very happy. I know that both of those. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh Jesus Christ. But I, I'm glad that those both of those boys right there down there below that you see Captain Rockham and usually Nick Knack uh, both got PS5s recently. Uh, I know that they have games that they've been wanting to play, and I know they're both looking forward to uh, Horizon Forbidden West. So I think that's going to be uh, I'm just I'm excited they get to play it at the best possible way. Right. That's that's going to be right. really, really cool. Um, and I'm excited for them. So that's really good um other than that i just got quick stuff that's going to release i mean do you have anything before we hop into what's going to be releasing in the next couple weeks uh no not really i've got something for afterwards before we sign off but besides that no okay cool awesome uh let's see here so uh a couple games that are releasing next week and that have already released in the last couple days uh, you have Anacrusis for the xbox series x and s as well as pc and in game pass I can't say uh, that Anacrusis is giving the best reviews from people. Um, right. It's basically a take Deathloop's art style and time period and put it into a back for blood setting with aliens, guns, and kind of just a four four person co op game against an overwhelming uh, number of amount of enemies and things like that. A lot of people say it doesn't run very well. It's in game preview, so they have time to fix it and all that. But um, we'll see what happens. Uh, Also, we have God of War hitting the PC, which a lot of people are excited about and want more people to do. They want a lot of people want PlayStation to start releasing their games on on PC faster because God of War came out, what, 2019, I think 2020. No, 20. I think it was 2019. I can't remember, but um yeah i don't know i don't know it's hard to explain but i know a lot of people are excited for it finally being on pc uh then we have nobody saves the world xbox series x and s xbox one pc also coming to game pass rainbow six extraction ps5 ps4 xbox series x and s um xbox one stadia pc on january 20th also coming to game pass i feel like this is just a game pass releases jesus christ that's uh, the whole podcast <laughs> exactly i mean <laughs> I mean, sponsor us now. Um, so Windjammers 2, I'm kind of excited for this. This looks like it'll be a lot of fun. This one is not coming to Game Pass, but does release on January 20th if you're interested in that. PlayStation 5, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, Stadia, and PC. And then last but not least, we have Paparazzi hitting PC on the 20th. So a um, couple of games if you're interested, pick them up. If not, don't worry about it. 
Uh, but if you have Game Pass, don't have to worry because most of those are coming to you anyways, just to check out. Right. Um, so that'll be a good time. Hermes, do you have anything else for us? You said you had something, so let's hear it. What is it? Yeah, I wanted to, know. to uh, I wanted to soft announce split screen gaming. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yes, that's fine. Let's do it. Yeah. What do you uh, do? You have any kind of uh, tips or details on what that could be? Yeah. So I uh, I think we're looking to start split screen gaming, which is uh, one of the Fridays out of the month. We will uh, take a little bit of time off and play a game with both of the face cams on stream. Uh, maybe that's some some halo forge maybe that's some, oh shit uh, dude there's a game i want to check out uh we might need a little bit bigger of a group so maybe if uh some community members want to come in sure it's called sure, deceit. Sure, sure deceit i've deceit okay I've thus, seen the, okay i've seen the kind of funny guys play it and i would oh I would nice to check it out fucking shout out every single time they get brought up because the kind of funny fucking crew is fantastic oh my god huge inspiration for what we do here um but they do it on a more grander scale than we do, and they're fucking great. So go follow them, check them out. Um, yes, I will agree with you. I don't know what we're going to call it. Split screen games, split screen plays some shit. Who knows what we'll call it, right? But uh, I hope you guys will join us for that. That's going to be a good time. And we might, like Hermie said, include some community members, people of the show, these fucking goobers below at the bottom in the chat that you see, of course. Maybe we'll include them if they ever, ever so kind uh, to join us one of these nights. But... Um, split screen play split screen <laughs> <laughs> so fucking sick oh so good but i hope you guys uh do you have anything else i guess i'm trying to rush out of here but i know you have uh no. uh a a big night tonight i know actually the three of you guys do <laughs> right split screen play some shit yeah <laughs> <laughs> I know that you guys have uh I'm gonna give a shout out real quick here. I know this probably isn't gonna work, at least not on screen, but it'll work in the uh it'll work there. That'd be kind of crazy if it came up. But if you guys go check out Captain Rock Cap, as well as usually Nick Knack. I don't know if Nick Knack's streaming. If he is, uh go drop a follow anyways. You boys uh and girls should have a good time over there. Um, I know you're playing Pulsar. I don't want to kind of spoil yes. anything, but I know you guys uh, are going to be taking care of a spaceship and chaos will ensue after that. So I'm excited. I'll be so there for a little excited. bit. I, I'm going to be there, man. Is it, well, Okay, explain the game uh, for people who might not know. Uh, space Adventure. Okay. Uh, Final Frontier. Um, uh, Star Trek. I don't know, I don't know how to rapid fire. <laughs> yeah, Star Trek. Uh Basically, we're going to be manning a space vessel okay. and uh, exploring the galaxy and seeing where that takes us. This is role based. Yes. Yes. Yep. Uh, you so got, everybody you... has their individual role on the, the spacecraft. So have you guys assigned those yet? Not that I know of. <laughs> is, there, is there a role you're looking to get? Uh, no, not really. I can kind of fill into anything. OK. All right. I'd love to check out Engineer. Or, you know, maybe science. Uh, Let's go, dude. Okay. I'm dude, excited. It's going to be a great time. I know I'm going to be there, so I hope you guys join as well. Um, but Hermes, yeah, man, this is episode 32. Holy crap. We're doing 32 of these. Yeah, half a stack in Minecraft. Let's go. <laughs> um, but I appreciate you, buddy. Thank you for coming on. Thank you so much. Uh, if you're on YouTube Thanks and you watched me. all the way through, fucking fantastic. Um, I'm very proud of you, but thank you so much for that. Uh, if you want to join us on Friday nights, you can hop into the chat, which will be featured, of course, down there. Not in my crotch, but more so on the screen. Um, there you go. So you guys can always come in, have fun with us, uh, have a good time, ask some questions, use the highlight my message in chat, uh, and we'll hopefully get to your message as well. So uh, I think that you guys should join us Friday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern time, and uh, we'll go from there. So thank you, Hermes, again. It's always a pleasure. We had a good talk today. Absolutely. Started off with NFTs and it took like 75% of the time, but that's <laughs> what NFT NFTs are doing right now. So uh, thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your night. We'll see you later on episode 33 next Friday. Thanks, everybody. See you later.